All right, welcome back to WMAC Now with your host Chuck Stevenson. Coming at you tonight with a fight review. Took a little bit to get this one done, but finally getting it there. Uh, we're going to UFC 258. We're going to the strawweight co-main event. 10th ranked Macy, the future borrower, coming in at 8-1. and one, Taking on 15th ranked Alessa, Alexa Grasso, coming in at 12-3. and three. Now, This is Barber's first fight back in just over a year. She you know, tore ACL against... Well, Roxanne Modafferi took her first loss of her career there. On the other hand, this was Grasso's, excuse me, Grasso's second fight as a flyweight coming off a successful divisional debut with the unanimous decision win over Gian Kim last year. So very much looking forward to seeing how Barber was going to do after an injury and looking to see, you know, how Grasso would stand against someone, you know, the physical caliber of Barber at flyweight and you know first thing you noticed when the fight started was the sheer size difference barber clearly big for flyweight division now grasso moved up from from strawweight but so did Gra uh, barber but you know grasso still noticeably smaller fighter of the two so anyway first round uh, grasso was able to keep barber at bay with straight punches uh, barber she would faint from like way outside of range but then as soon as she wanted to go inside, she would rely on looping hooks to close, and Grasso was able to easily counter them with just really basic jabs and straight crosses. Now Grasso, she really surprised in the clinch, and a lot of people thought that Barber would be able to use her size to really control the clinch, but Grasso, you know, she surprised in the clinch. She used proper technique. You know, she kept her head down. She would get under hooks very easily on Barber, and you know, she really avoided being outmuscled by the larger barber in the clinch, which a lot of people thought, you know, that would uh, be one of Grasso's problems. I, I remember when they first clinch, I'm thinking, ah, crap, this is where uh, Grasso could uh, get hurt here. But she didn't. So nice round there for Alexa Grasso. Second round, you know, Grasso again played the matador to Barber's bull, Mexican pun intended. Uh, she stopped the punches, or excuse me, stopped the rushes with straight punches again. Just, you know, really a jab or jab cross was enough to do it. Um, then Grasso continued to outland Barber in the clinch as well. Every time they clinched, it was actually Grasso that was landing better in the clinch. And it, uh, John Anik even mentioned it with the numbers. Now, Barber was able to take Grasso down off of a caught kick. However, Grasso on bottom, immediately started defending, throwing some up kicks. Barber got down into the guard, but Grasso was able to grab an arm, uh, Barber's left arm, and then rolled out for it, using Omoplata to sweep Barber, uh, gain side control off of that, moved to the other side to hunt for the arm triangle, but then Barber rolled, giving up her back, and Grasso jumped on her back, started hunting for the rear naked choke, but it was too late in the loss or excuse me, too uh, late in the round. But yeah, the round ended with Grasso on Barber's back. And then the third round, uh, after hitting air early, you know, Barber, she started getting desperate. She went for the clinch, lost that clinch battle, but take got a takedown, although Grasso was able to get up pretty quickly. Um, then as Grasso was getting up, Barber landed a few big shots that had, uh, you know, Grasso retreating. Uh, backing up to try to recover a little bit. And that's when Barber really made it a dogfight. You know, she basically had to pull Grasso into her game, make it, you know, like dirty. So there was some more clinching, and Barber just started throwing everything she really had into the fight. And then she got a, a Barber got another takedown within the final 10 seconds. Um, so definitely the third round was Barber's best by far. She still missed a lot of the stuff that she threw, but it looked nice enough to impress, impress the judges. So it went to the judges, and they all saw it. 29-28 for your winner, Alexa Grasso. Very nice win for Grasso. Seriously, back to the drawing board for Barber, though. But nice win for Grasso. So I have a couple notes here. Okay, first off, this fight is an example of what happens when you know your natural ability and relying on natural ability will only take you so far. Okay, Barber ran into a superior technician in Grasso that 
did not back down under the brute strength and, you know, the assaults. Um, you know, twice Barber got by, you know, su technically superior fighters in Aldrich and Robertson by just using, you know, sheer strength of will and her athletic abilities got her past superior technicians. But this time, she ran into a brick wall. Okay, I uh, really liked the improvement that Grasso showed on the ground. I mean, she finally went on the attack from the bottom. You know, any, every time we've seen her get taken down, she's gone on a defense just trying to close guard and hold on and hope for a stand-up. This time, she went on the attack. So really nice improvements on the ground from Grasso. Um, also, Grasso really only needed basic fundamentals to win, which, you know, everybody loves to see superior technique. We want to see fancy stuff. You know, that's, that's what gets talked about the most. But I think this fight is a reminder that it's the fundamentals that do, you know, 80 to 90% of the work and the fancy stuff, you know, has to come from those fundamentals that allow you to get nicer and get to the flashier stuff. So really nice to see someone that just needed fundamentals to win and didn't try to get too fancy, just stuck to the basics. Um, one thing I noted, there were times in the clinch where you could see Barbara's confusion. Like she did not think she was gonna lose the clinch battles to Grasso. I mean, she was the one that kept initiating them and then every time Grasso would reverse her, you'd, sometimes you'd see Barbara, she'd like look up and, or look out and just had this look on her face like, what is going on? How am I losing the clinch battle here? Um, then with, Gra with Grasso, Flyweight's got a new contender. You know, this division, it's taken a while. It's taken of several years, but this division is really starting to get exciting. The fighters that have been in it for a while are starting to develop. Uh, you got fighters coming from, you know, bantamweight or, or strawweight that are starting to impress. This flyweight division is really looking up and it has a new contender in Alexa Grasso that makes it just that much more exciting. And then my final note on this, look, Barber's hype is done. You know, you could try to, you know, excuse away the loss to Mata Ferry based on, you know, tearing her ACL mid-fight, but can't use that excuse in this one. She just got outworked, got out-techniqued, outfought, just boom. Every weakness that she has and has been exposed in her past opponents just got exposed that much more in this fight. I mean, she just looked terrible in there. I mean, just looked absolutely terrible. And that's not taken away from Grasso. Because it was Grasso who was able to help make her look terrible. So, Barber's hype is officially done. Now, UFC is still trying to hold on to it. Dana White in a post-fight press conference or an interview afterward in a scrum was saying, you know, oh, she's still young, she'll develop, blah, blah, blah. And then goofy Joe Rogan, who's getting dumber with every event, you know, as soon as the, the results were read, he kept trying, kept, went back, right back to trying to build up Barber's hype. And it's like, what are you talking about? Talk about the winner. Stop trying to build up the loser of this fight. He was trying to build up Barber. It's like, no, 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 no. And I'm still trying to see it with people online. But listen, Barber's hype is done. Until she shows some marked improvement, I'm not impressed. I never was impressed, and I'm impressed even less. And I refuse to be impressed by this girl until she shows that she is actually working on improving her game. Because up to now, I haven't seen any improvements in her game. I've just seen the same thing over and over again, and it's failed her twice now. All right, so for things to work on, for Grasso, great job. Uh, keep working on the takedown defense and her get-ups. You know, she showed good takedown defense most roughly in this fight, got taken down a few times, but her, her ability to get back up and her reversal on, in the second round was just sweet. So just keep working on, this, on that stuff. For Barber, Wow, I had to put this all in caps here, but work, nothing, but fundamentals. 
fundamentals. You know, she needs to realize that there is, the word fun is in fundamentals and just work on those because she has none. She has no fundamentals, okay? When she was fainting in every round, she was fainting from way outside and then she'd abandon them to just throw looping hooks to try to close. And she was way overextending on her punches too. Way overextending, just leaving herself vulnerable to counters. You know, someone said this online and I have to agree, it looks like that she saw someone working on feints, thought, well, that's what I need to do. And then just started doing it without actually working it and learning how to apply them properly. Because when she was fainting, she, they weren't doing anything. She was way too far outside. Grasso just like kind of stood there looking at her. So uh, I would say just abandon the fainting for now, work on the basics, okay? And in basics, throw straight punches. No more wavy, looping haymakers, okay? She needs to learn to throw some straight punches because she throws nothing but looping, wavy haymakers. Until she learns to throw some straight punches, she's gonna get countered by anybody that actually knows how to throw straight punches. Okay, then she needs to learn distance control. I'll tell you what, she may have lost this round 29-28, but she won at 30-25 again in a battle against the air. I mean, her distance control in this fight was just terrible. Just terrible distance control. And then finally, positioning in the clinch. You know, she's too worried about out-muscling fighters in the clinch to worry about, to even think about, you know, Am I using proper positioning? Do I have my head down low? Am I using my weight properly? Uh, am I, you know, do I have the underhooks in good? Just, she has no, it's like with everything else, she abandons proper technique to just use her strength and natural athleticism. And she needs to learn how proper positioning in the clinch, you know, get your head down low, get the proper, uh, weight distribution, underhooks, stuff like that. I mean, we're talking, you know, like day one clinch work stuff here that she is just showing a, an extreme lack of. I mean, like I said, she needs to work on nothing but fundamentals. All right, last thing to talk about for fights to make. Sticking with Macy Barber. All right, hear me out on this one. Maria Agapova, okay. Both fighters have crashed hard in their most recent outings. Agapova just, she had some hype going into her fight against Shanna Dobson and just lost all of it. And then Barber still had some hype going into the Grasso fight and lost all of it. And both were very similar in that they were just trying to throw whatever would work, hoping it would hit, and it failed them. So I think these two against each other would show which of these two actually shows some real promise between these two and a win for either one of them would allow them to start on that road to redemption and these two have a lot to redeem for Grasso you know I think Jessica I would be a good fight assuming assuming now that Grasso replaces Barber at the number 10 spot. Number eight, Jessica I is open right now. I think that'd be a good matchup. They're both primarily boxers, so you'd have a primarily boxing style fight. I think that'd be a good one. Now, Catelyn Chukagian has called Grasso out. I'm not, no, I'm, that's a little too early for Grasso, okay? Chukagian is just trying to look to beat up, to beat any like fighter that has a little bit of hype going right now because she knows she's not getting another title shot anytime soon. I mean, she just fought for it, what, last year, I think, or the year before and got beat very soundly. So she's trying to work her way back to the title fight any way she can by getting wins. And number 10 against number two, uh, that just does not sit right with me. Ketlin Chukagian, you know, call out someone better than that. So for me, I'd say Jessica I would be a next good step up for Alexa Grasso. Okay, so those are my thoughts on the co-main event of UFC 258. Nice fight, I enjoyed it. I mean, I, I was nervous the whole time, you know. I'm a Grasso fan. So I was cheering for her the whole time. Uh, I picked her to win, which is nice, but 
it's just nice to see a fighter that I like genuinely win because I usually have a hard time, you know, putting aside my biases to make it a legit pick. But with this one, I thought, you know, Grasso would definitely win as long as she avoided those big haymakers. And for the most part, she did. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on the fight in the comments down below. Now, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Share it as well. That's how the channel grows. And while you're at it, what are you waiting for? Subscribe to WMAC now. The most complete women's mixed martial arts dedicated platform on YouTube. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.